Hello, welcome to another video street chat. And uh, I'm joined again by Yuri. Hi. Hello. And uh, today we're going to talk about approaches to street photography, or more specifically, um, how you conduct yourself, what you look for, and things like this when you're out on the street, what your mindset is, I guess, um, rather than uh, necessarily like, rather than, uh, I don't know, approach a different way or something. Uh, so we talked about it on Twitter on Saturday. We had a bit of a, a Twitter chat, which we do, we try to do uh, every Saturday at uh, one o'clock GMT time. Um, and uh, there were a few interesting quotes and a few different uh, topics about that. So uh, I think one of the things we talked about was the different styles of street photography there are out there. Um, because uh, because it's quite a broad topic, isn't it? it uh... Yeah, I mean, everyone has, has their own approach. And um, um, I mean, you, you said, you mentioned previously that you don't really, you don't have a style yet. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it, it's true for, for beginners or for anyone who's starting out for a few, a very few years in street photography. Um, Still, you need to work on it. You need to keep going out there and, and find find your voice and find your find your style that suits you. I guess the way you approach it, the way you do and people you look, um, the characters you look, the situations you look. So you find it as you go along. Yeah, I think it's what's quite interesting is someone like uh, so someone like Bresson. He has a he has a quite thick style which he kept like most of his career and then you look at someone like uh, Kudelka who's done really different things over time and like really changed his approach although I guess you know Kudelka would you really... some people might not call him a street photographer or some of his work street photography but I think that's you know that's okay as well like uh, I think uh, I always try to think of myself now as a photographer not a street photographer I like street photography, yeah, but I'm I don't want to bind myself just to just to it. Um, like if I if in ten years time I decide I don't like taking pictures of people on the street, but I like portraits, then sure, that's fine for me. Yeah, we don't want to limit ourselves. I mean, that's the that's this, and it's not a it's not a good thing. I think you, know, you put your limits on yourself. I mean, yeah. I think actually Come that's on. quite a. You've frozen a bit, yeah. <laughs> you look, yeah. You look a bit drunk. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Technical uh, problem starting straight away. Oh, I wonder if it's my fault. No, it's not. Um, I'm not. My automatic backup system is not causing trouble. Um, no, but the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm on. Uh, at the moment, I'm using an old Mac, so uh, ah. um, I guess I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Mac is the problem. The Mac is the problem. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. We'll, yeah, see, we'll think, see how we go. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I think one of the appeals of street photography is it is so diverse that um, if you're out and you don't feel like um, taking risks and approaching people. You could just do some urban landscape style things. Um, what, what are the things I've started to enjoy doing at the moment? Um, and I kind of said last time, I like to try and get a few photos out of the way. I, I keep an eye out for things which are kind of out of place or look interesting um, and try and take some pictures of those even without people. And um, I think that's yeah, something, the, something odd. Or... Yeah, I think that's one of the beauties of street photography uh, that you can just, you know, it's so it's the rules are so in your own control. Ah, you're back. <laughs> um, so you can. Am I? <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> I guess. Like one second, your eyes went from here to here. <laughs> so much better. I'm going to give you props for your eyes moving. Um, <laughs> yeah thanks so um do you like do you 
try and stick to one particular style or do you try lots of different things when you're out on the streets? Do you, do you go out thinking like, I want to take street portraits today or I want to try and get close to people today or I'm going to try and get lots of context or whatever? Um, right, so first I would like to apologize for anyone who's watching. So I'm frozen, but I'm still going to We'll turn this into an audio um, one. No one will know. <laughs> Oh, I think I've lost you completely. <laughs> I think I've lost you completely. Oh, I'm going to pause it because this is terrible. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> what is my uh, approach? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do, you, what do you think about? Do you go out looking for a particular style of photo? Well, no, no, not really. I, I don't have a, like, a mindset. Uh, I don't have, I, I normally don't plan. Uh, when I go out, uh, well, I take a camera and just wander down the streets and look for something interesting, something that catches my attention. Uh, maybe an interesting person or an interesting background, and then I wait for someone to walk in, or um, I just kind of go with the flow, I guess, and uh, look for situations for something interesting to happen or something odd, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, maybe you follow follow the light as well, which is a, is a good technique, I guess, or good um, good advice for <clears throat> for the ones uh, for people who are starting out. To learn to see the light and follow the light. Do you prefer having light behind you, in front of you, to the sides? Uh, which what sort of position do you want the light? Well, I, I like um, I like to to use reflections as well. Mm. Uh, so I forgot to mention. So um, when I was discovering the work of um, Pink, Pinkasov in English, it's Pinkasov, Georgi Pinkasov. Um, he's a he's a Magnum member, and he his work is consists of a lot of images uh, where he uses light and reflections. Um, the way they form, uh, the way they change the, the scene completely, and the use of um, he shoots in color, mm. uh, so it really becomes um, something something magical. I mean, out of nothing. So that that really fascinated me, and um, I was really for, for the last maybe three or four months, I was kind of imitating. I guess you know, everyone um, goes through through the stage like this. Um, kind of following his, uh, his guidelines and uh, trying trying this technique. Mm. So it's kind of for me it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's where where the light comes where the light comes from. I mean, it's from the back. I mean, I just look at the scene and I try to find something that appeals to me um, and try to make it different. I try to make it um, try to put myself into the picture um, so it really it really depends on the situation I mean it's, yeah. <laughs> it depends on luck as well yeah of course yeah um, yeah I can understand that as well I I think um, yeah I've been doing a few more as you've probably seen a few more silhouettes recently I don't like silhouettes but I've done a few <laughs> like I've taken a few and be like, oh, I took a silhouette. Oh, it's okay, I guess. Um, so generally, from because of that, I like I prefer to have the light behind me because I know that I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get the details on someone's face more uh, if the light's behind me. So that generally, um, of course, you know, it's uh, it's good to have it. I think there like there's good things about every aspect like if the light's behind you if the light's uh you know if the light's in front of you yeah you can go for silhouettes you can try and get like uh, starbursts from the light as well um you could you know get a bit of lens flare if you want that jj abrahams would approve um and yeah you know uh if it's to the side you can you can look at like what 
there's the shadow do on the wall. So I think there's, so I think it's, you know, it's good to wherever the light is in a way, as long as you've got. Yeah, I, li I like when it's, uh, when you have something like, um, what is it called? Um, when, when the light shines through um, like a, a gate or something. Mm. Um, that it forms patterns on um, on a person or on the street, and then you kind of play with that. You trying to create something, uh, some something interesting. Yeah, I've had a bit more. And also, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to say it, it. It it had been quite cloudy recently, which is nice because it's soft light, but it's not so creative. <laughs> you know? uh, so now we've got a bit sharper brighter light um i've noticed that uh in, in some of the areas we've got a lot more of these like streaks of light coming through which is should be quite good for experimenting with yeah yeah okay. good light is important yeah, yeah. Uh, um so we, we talked about being being invincible or, or not yeah and you talked about it in your blog as well you, you had a great post um uh, Article about it, and when when you found that being invisible is actually, or try to be invisible when you're starting out, it's actually um, not not a good thing. Mm. Uh, well, a negative thing uh, to you, and I think um, I think you're right. There. I, mean, I I mentioned that uh, I would start from from far away, and then. Can, as, as you progress, as you feel more confident, get closer. Mm. But by trying, I agree with you on that point, by trying to be invisible, you're actually putting pressure on yourself and then actually look creepier yeah. uh, to, to surrounding <laughs> to people uh, around you. So you actually <laughs> draw more attention. Yeah, there was a, a quote I saw from Jeremy from our uh, street chat, which I've lost. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, where he said that um, he tries, uh, in his approach, uh, he tries not to apologize because he doesn't, uh, he knows he's not doing anything wrong. So he tries, uh, so he, yeah. and if you're apologizing, that shows you're doing something wrong. I think that's, uh, that's an important aspect of uh, an approach as well, as well as the sort of, you know, uh, if you're trying to be, invisible for like because you think you're doing something wrong then i think it's more important you change your mindset that it's not something wrong like uh, rather than uh i think be like being blending in i think is probably better advice than being invisible um just being just being there being part of it being no. Yeah, no, it's it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, I think it's important for 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 anyone who who wants to shoot street photography to go out and actually uh, set set your mind right and, and just tell yourself, "Well, I'm doing what I love, <laughs> and I'm not doing anything wrong." Everything you mentioned. So, the more guilty you feel, the more the more negative is um, a response from from the people. And... Yeah, I think like also if you are um, because you know if you are going out for fame to try and like steal someone's image, if that is your mindset, then uh, then you need to change that mindset. Like uh, so, I think it, it's it's easy to be like I'm not doing anything wrong. Uh, but actually, some I think some some people do go out and do take street photos for the wrong reason. Like they want to humiliate people, they want to uh, like ridicule someone or something like that. Um, I think that is quite a um, you know I I don't personally have that mindset uh, when I go out, and so I know like uh, if I'm taking someone's photo. No, I'm not doing this to embarrass you. No, I'm not taking advantage of you. 
Uh, no, I did take it because you are interesting as a person. You, there's something about you that I think is worth, or this moment that I think is worth sharing. Um, and if you don't want me to share it, fine. I've got no problem with that. Um, so I think that helps a lot. Uh, there, are, there are some people like, uh, is his name Doug Wallace, I think his name is, who was doing this project in Harrods called uh oh he was doing it around knightsbridge i can't remember the name of the project it's a brilliant project and it's sort of about yeah. uh the way the like elite in knightsbridge area around harrods and stuff like this the really rich uh families who uh drive around there showing off and he's come under a lot of attacks from people saying like oh you're ridiculing people and his response is, no, I'm just documenting people and, you know, showing them as they're going around. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think looking at his work, I probably agree with him that he is actually trying to uh, document things. I don't think he's taken a very ridiculing approach. And I think if, uh, if people do view some of the photos as, oh, you're, you're, you're ridiculing me, you're making fun of me. Perhaps it's actually like the mirror <laughs> reflecting a side of them which they don't like in that case. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's important to, to document the things. It's important to document life. And I think it's, um, I'm going to mention, uh, I think it's Nick Turpin, that, um, am I pronouncing it right? Nick Turpin, that says yeah. that it's Turpin. just as important to take, it's just as important to take pictures on, on the street and on everyday life because that's how we'll know we know what's going on around <laughs> us and uh, it's just as important to take pictures outside as uh, during the, the war conflict or mm. um, in this kind of reportage yeah that's a really good point actually um yeah that that because it, it's when you see some of these um old old photos uh, these historic images and uh, you look at them and you can, it does show you something about life back then. And I think that is a real appeal of street photography. The idea that perhaps this so ordinary moment will look so incredible uh, in the future. Um, or the, so, so that's, that's, but then I get into this uh, interesting part because lots of people are kind of like for example um mobile phones people on mobile phones this is like a cliche to take photos of right now oh look no everyone's on their phone no one's talking to each other type thing and i i kind of feel like i've seen that photo a million times so i don't think it's worth taking so i intentionally try and avoid mobile phones at all cost um yeah but maybe there is something that is because i i mean i'm guessing in the future we won't have mobile phones we'll have some crazy other technology so some chip inside the ear or something <laughs> yeah something like that who knows so Maybe it is worth taking photos of. I, I, I've seen a. I saw an exhibition of. Uh, so I've seen two good projects. I think on mobile phones, uh, one of which is called um, Removed, which got a lot of press. Where the guy took away, uh, like, saw people using mobile phones. He asked them to take away their mobile phone and then take the photo of them doing what they were doing. Um, so. That was, you know, that's kind of a bit clever. There's like photos of a couple in bed, uh, which was him and his wife, I think. Uh, there's a photo of, like, there's lots of photos, like a couple having a meal, family uh, at a coffee shop, and there's one of like a bride and groom as well. Um, so that that's kind that's of thing you need to get creative. So. Yeah. But the other one, which I which I saw, which uh, I didn't like the whole project, but there's a couple of photos in the project which are great. And the reason they are great is because there's a person who doesn't have a mobile phone out. 
and that's the person that you're drawn to. Everyone else is like this, and then the other person's like, oh. And like that person, it makes the photo. Um, so I think, so I, I don't know. I think it's something like, I'm sure there's a lesson to take out of that whole thing, like how to be historic. Like, I guess it's the emotion which really makes that picture. And, you know, someone looking at their phone doesn't have emotion usually. So, you know, they're just kind of a blank face almost inevitably. Yeah. So like perhaps, a, like a um, <laughs> so perhaps that's, and perhaps that's the thing that makes timeless photos. It's uh, ones where there's something historic, but emotions which are universal between, between them, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's true. And you have to send me the links of um, those projects. I haven't. I don't think I've seen them. Okay, on, on I. Phones. Yeah, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah I mean, I know, I, I know Martin Barr did the one. Really? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure about mobile phones, like um, the present time, but a few years ago, I guess he's got he's got series of photos on people on phones. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Martin, I'm fairly sure Martin Parr's taken photos on most things now. <laughs> He's been at for so long. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, I, I, I don't think we talked about hunting versus fishing last time, did we? Um, in the previous video chat, you mean? In the previous video one, yeah. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, well, why don't we... Uh, so, so I think we kind of defined it last time, like the idea of, you know, hunting, you're going out, you're walking around, you're searching for things, fishing, you find a place, you wait. Uh, and like, obviously this is, you know, broad, broad strokes. Um, but I think those are like two of the most common approaches. And, you know, usually I think people do a bit of both. You know, you walk for a bit, maybe you stop at a spot that you think is interesting, wait there for a bit, maybe move on. Um, which are you more naturally drawn to? Uh, well, I'd like to mention the, the maybe a, a third, third option that we didn't Great. talk about, which is just, which is just um, enjoying the moment and neither hunting, because <laughs> that could lead to depression quite quickly <laughs> mm. uh, because when you when you keep hunting and you, uh, you you search you search for that for that decisive moment um, you know <laughs> people get you know you can get frustrated because you, you will never come you know or you may come after uh, three months of, of, of hunting so you you can you can get worn out and you can get frustrated quickly I mean uh, when um, Fishing, I mean, it's 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 a good option. It's, if you have time, I mean, you should do uh, and, and you should practice whenever you can. Uh, and so, the third option I'd like to add is just just yeah, just enjoying the moment and just go with the flow, uh, which means you're not forcing you're not forcing it. I mean, you're not actually looking for uh, for something interesting because the thing is, everything is so quick and you know, you go out there and it's, everything is big and there's lots of people walking around and you don't know um, what to focus on and just, just just go around, have a camera ready, know your camera, which is the, the important thing. Uh, so you don't, you don't fuff around with the settings when, when you see something interesting and you want to take a picture. So let just let the images come to you. I mean, I guess it's, maybe it's, it's the cliche as well. Yeah, so you go around and not forcing it, but just be aware and observe, uh, enjoy the moment. I think that's that's great advice. I think, uh, yeah, well, I I I had that a similar thought at the weekend that um, that actually, like, what I was doing, I would enjoy this without my camera. Just walking around, enjoying the sunshine because it's a really, it was a really nice day. 
you know, occasionally interacting with some people, seeing different parts of the city, which I hadn't explored as much, uh, just <laughs> doing, like, there was one moment where I noticed something. I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. And then it's like, take a step to the side. Oh, that's a little bit better. Oh, look, that's lined up. Oh, that's not quite lined up. Okay, just move. And every now and again, I'll be walking down. The, there's a couple of streets I walk down, and they've got lots of tram lines. And every now and again, I'll just walk along and be like, okay, can I line up the tram lines with my eyes and the top of that building? And, um, and yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, just about, okay. And I think it is, um, it is a sort of... Uh, Think, and it's really important actually, I think, because um, there's, uh, you know, two, in broad terms, there are two different types of motivation, extrinsic and intrinsic. Intrinsic is the one where you enjoy it for the sake of it. And that is the one which is more long term lasting and is more powerful and leads to more success. So uh, I know a lot about it because of learning a language. It's... Um, you know, if students who just enjoy speaking in a foreign language uh, or and communicating, they do better than students who are told, you know, if you pass the test at the end of the year, we'll give you a thousand pounds. So, so yeah, I think it's yeah, true it's, for photography too. If you're if you're interested purely in the like the decisive moment, not gonna be. Uh, you won't be as successful. You won't keep at it as long because you'll have like months of meh. And then uh, if you just enjoy it, then. Yeah, that's that's a good tip. I mean, especially nowadays when everyone's worried, checking their phones for, you know, how many likes they will get from that picture. So you kind of, you took, you kind of, I, I, I experienced that myself. So uh, at times, and I was like, why, what, what are you doing? I mean, you just, you know. Yeah. You're doing it for yourself and you're not worried. Okay, I'm going to take that picture and upload it on Facebook or Instagram. You know, uh, hopefully I'll get like, 50 likes. If you don't get 50 likes, uh, I'll go into depression. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's that's a good point. You just you just enjoy the moment and not about, it's not about uh, the end result. Well, maybe it is a little bit, but I mean, it's, no, I mean when you're when you're out in the streets, you actually enjoy what you what you do, and you enjoy it so much. And I think Alex Webb said, um, "You must enjoy it, and you must do it because the reward is uh, is oh, I can't remember. Uh, the reward you get is that you keep doing it, or something like this. You <laughs> must look it up. And cool. Look it up and find it." Yeah, right. that's a. Uh, it's interesting. I think like I was, maybe we should talk about motivation for the next uh, for the next chat because I think it's a it's a really good topic uh, on many levels and um, yeah I think like I, the worst things my motivation are when I if an Instagram photo gets more likes than usual like I had one recently which got like 50 or something like that i was like oh wow brilliant and then the next one got like five yeah that one was my mom and it's like ah oh, come on <laughs> it just destroys it or or like it got the same number i think like it got like 12 50 i was like oh god man <laughs> i really <laughs> like, put myself just... into that you know <laughs> it, and it, like the thing that's so stupid is it got like the same number as the other ones it got like no, a normal number but because the last one had got more it was like uh, yeah yeah well, that's, it's, a, it's a good topic to to cover you know so we, we will talk about social media and uh, so i guess um, yeah. it social be, media is a to... really good topic actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe that's the next one then um but, uh, I think uh, like so. So our our Monday master for the for yesterday was uh, Vivian Meyer or Maya Meyer Meyer I think, uh, and um, I think she's an interesting. She's really she was really interesting because she didn't 
you know, she hardly uh, developed any of her photos, let alone produce, uh, let alone displayed any. Uh, and she was a very secretive character, and yet she made really great photos. Uh, and it's you know, so only after her death that uh, she's re received acclaim. I think um, like she took uh, a hun over a hundred and fifty thousand photos. I think I saw something like this. Uh, yeah. Like uh, in the age of film. <laughs> That's insane. Well, before, dude, yeah, like I'm fairly sure. Like I'm fairly sure it would be a pretty hard challenge to do 150,000 photos in a short space of time in digital. But uh, maybe just get one of those ones which takes like 10 a second and just keep holding. Yeah. Um, First mode. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, but. Like, it's amazing that she took so much. She clearly had that motivation of it was just rewarding to do it for itself, its sake. And I think that is something I really want to take out of uh, our Monday Master session. Yeah. That, you know, just do it for yourself. Just enjoy it for yourself, even if no one else cares. Yeah, I mean, you care, and that's that's important. And, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a good point. Um Shall we do our um, photographer picks? Um, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Cool. Uh, do you want me to type, uh, type you, a name or? Yeah, if you type it. Can you drop a link? I don't know if you can. I can, but or you can type it. I'll drop. I'll drop my link. Yeah, so I'm drop the link because I don't want to touch anything in this computer. You know, I've got the <laughs> lab open. <laughs> that's all I need. That's, enough. that's too much. Um, I am choosing. Okay, I see your one. I think I've submitted my one. I hope I have. I am choosing. No, I didn't. Adam Constantine. So I met Adam from a workshop, an online workshop I'm doing, and he's still not coming up. That's good. Uh, I really like his style. He shoots. Uh, he shoots mostly black and white, but on his website there are some color ones as well, actually. But he's definitely been doing black and white recently. And uh, with Flash and Yuri's disappeared, <laughs> which is a, a silly uh, good sign. Good stuff there, uh, Blab. I'm really proud of you. Um, yeah. so hopefully, Yuri will come back here a second. Yeah, so uh, Adam stuff, you know, black and white with Flash. Um, and it's really interesting. He gets quite creative with some of his uh, things. Uh, clearly, this does not want to show a uh, show an image at all. Uh, hey, Yuri, welcome back. I don't think I can share. I'm like, well, I'll have a page on my website with uh, links to this. Uh, a page on Street Talks. That's uh, streetto.gs, uh, and there'll be links to all the things we talked about here today. Uh, let me get up Aaron. Aaron appears to be a film star. <laughs> Aaron Berg Photography. Um, I think if you put Aaron Berger Photo or Aaron Berger Photography, he's got a I found his... I think I found his Instagram, which is like a pizza and a dollar bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so it. I found a link to his website. Yeah. So, okay. Do you explain? Uh, yeah. That? Just to that's, that's from um, actually I heard his name from Matt Stewart. Um, mm. I listened to um, the uh, podcast, um, and um, where Matt Stewart was a guest. So it's, it's about an hour of. Um, podcast and he, just, he talks about a new book and he talks about his, his approach to uh, to street photography and his experiences and anyway he mentions uh, he mentions this um, Aaron Berger this photographer a New York I think an American a New York based photographer and, and I looked up his um, his photos and they're just hilarious some stuff is unbelievable yeah um, and it's really a good mix of um, I mean, it's it's kind of a photographer that gets away with any with any background. <laughs> um, it's all about it's all about the content uh, and the diversity of uh, characters and situations that he captures on the streets is 
it's <laughs> it's very uh, it's pretty fantastic. I mean, it's a uh, this this. Oh well, uh, it's it's funny. It's sad. I mean, there's lots of stuff. Yeah, really so, worth checking out. So check check this guy. He's out. got a great eye. Like there's some of these moments, I think, like I'm sure I've seen things like this, but just pass me by. Uh, like, yeah, some of them are just like, yeah, brilliant. And like some of them are crazy. I can't believe some of these images are amazing. New, yeah, New York exactly. probably New helps. York. It is New York. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a New York style. <laughs> and it's kind of this, uh, this kind of, um, uh, very gritty and um, colorful. I mean, it's mm. it's a good approach. To marrow it, but it's kind of a new new era. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really great stuff. Really great stuff. Really recommend it. Cool. Uh, thanks. Um, well, I guess uh, we'll wrap this one up uh, fairly soon. So if, uh, if people want to uh, join in with the next uh, street chat, it will be on Saturday. And I guess we're going to talk about social media, shall we do? Yeah, it's a, it's a street chat uh, on Twitter, yeah, not a live one. Yeah, so street chat on Twitter. So what happens is go on Twitter at 1, uh, 1 o'clock, uh, 1 p.m., so 1300 GMT time. So that's Greenwich Meridian time, which is uh, UK. Uh, Universal time, I think, is the other name for it. Um, and use the hashtag street chat, spelled exactly like it says it here. And then uh, interact. We'll, we'll put up some questions from the street chat account, which you can find at Twitter at underscore. That's the little line at the bottom. Uh, street chat. Uh, because someone else has street chat and it's an app. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about social media, how it uh, impacts your photography, how you should use it well, I guess, maybe some tricks to get millions of followers and likes because that's all that matters. That's, that's what we'll talk about. How to get millions of likes on Instagram. Cool. <laughs> no, no, no irony. No worries. Nope. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess we'll be back next week as well. Um, oh, keep an eye out for Monday Masters. That's another challenge we do. Um, I don't know who gets to pick the next master. Me, I think. Well, we'll work it out. Between us. We'll work it out. Maybe I get to pick the next master, which would be cool. Um, so where we share a master of photography, and uh, say something about a photo of theirs that we like. Um, and also join us next week for another street chat.